Okay, let's talk about the AEPA exam. And if you're watching this uh, video, I uh, assume you have some specific interest in AEPA and probably more specifically this particular exam. And so, as you probably well know, AEPA is Arizona Educator Proficiency Assessment. It's basically your teaching certification exams for the state of Arizona. And uh, these are very much like other exams uh, throughout the United States. Uh, many states use the Praxis exams. That's the exams that I took. Uh, if you're in California, you would be using the CBEST or CSET. But they're pretty much all, uh, they're very similar, all these uh, particular exams. Uh, so, you know, now some states, if you if you move from one state to another, you might have what they call reciprocity. You know, you'll be able to just take your teacher certification uh, to the other state because the exam other states will require to retake the, these particular certifications. So every state's different. Um, the I would just say, you know, as a teacher who's taking, uh, I took the practice uh, exam, is um, you're going to have to study for these exams, okay? I don't know. I'm sure there's people who just go in there and just take these exams, but they're, these these are professional exams. And just because in this particular one I'm going to talk about is um, the middle and elementary uh, or sorry, middle and early secondary math exam and the codes for that is NT or, or NES 105 exam specifically. So the thing about these are professional certification exams. They're going to require you to, you know, they're not going to just give you an exam and it's going to be like really easy and, you know, they're going to make it challenging as they should. We're talking about you know, uh, certifying you to teach, you know, um, students. That's a big deal. So Anyways, before we get started, if you're looking for a comprehensive math review uh, for this particular exam, I have a specific math uh, test prep course on it. I'll leave the link in the description of this video if you want to check that out. Um, again, my math, uh, my background is I am a uh, fellow teacher. I've taught math from middle school to college. So I know what it's like to take these exams and teach. So I understand the career, I understand the challenges, and um, you know, you have my respect right off the bat if you are, um, you know, pursuing your certification and, you know, uh, looking to be a teacher. I would say this much, teaching math, I thought, it, you know, it's it's very fulfilling, you know, uh, it's something that, you know, I think if you stick with it, you'll end up loving. But with that being said, let's get into this particular practice problem, right? So, I don't have a set of direction here, but I'm going to tell you here what I want you to do. So here we have something. I'm not going to hold off here. Uh, I'm not going to explain too much because at this level, middle and early secondary math, this is like, you know, we're talking about you need to have a super strong command of high school level mathematics, including a lot of advanced math. So what I want you to do is to say, okay, I have some sort of equation here, right? So I want you to tell me, okay, what type of equation is it? And then just how uh, would you go about to solve this guy? Okay, so what tools would you use? What strategies would you use? We're not going to solve it. I'm not going to uh, get into that. That's a, This would take a considerable amount of time. I just want you to identify what type of equation is this and how would you go about solving it? What skills, what concepts what type of things would you need in order to kind of like what tool bag would you need to to come over here and actually find the solutions to this okay so if you want to take a moment um, you know pause the video maybe write some quick things down I think that would be useful but I'll pause here and then I'll go over this okay so what we're looking at is a polynomial polynomial equation now, I'm not going to get into the definition of what a polynomial is and et cetera, et cetera, but you should know that, okay? Um, I don't need to know it because I'm not taking an exam. Well, I already know it, but you need to specifically know it, okay? This is a polynomial equation. There's other types of equations. There's, there are things that specifically make this a polynomial equation, okay? So because it's a polynomial equation, then we can apply all kinds of cool theorems and, and whatnot. So one of the main theorems that you want to uh, be thinking about is the fundamental the fundamental theorem of algebra, okay? So the fundamental theorem of algebra basically states that when you have a polynomial equation, 
the highest degree of that equation, okay, this is a fifth degree, is how many solutions you're going to have. Okay, So this particular equation here is going to have five solutions. So you say, okay, well, there's absolutely going to be five solutions, but what type of solutions? Well, they could be a combination of both, here, let me write it this way, real and or complex numbers. Okay, so let's just do a little chart here. So what are some of the ways this can break down? Well, we can have five real number solutions and zero complex solutions. So that would be a total of five total solutions. Okay. So if you're kind of like getting my drift here, first of all, if you're totally lost with this, then, you know, that's a good indication that you need to do you know, you need to put some work in for this exam because you need to understand polynomials are a huge part of um, of algebra. Okay, so you know, I'm not you know putting you down or anything like that. I'm just saying, hey, look, this is use this as feedback. You want to you know, you need to kind of go brush up, right, on on polynomials. And there's a lot to learn about polynomials. But anyways, let's get let's continue to explore this here. So real number roots. What am I talking about with real number roots? Well you should know what a real number is and you should know what a complex number is. And again, if you don't, then, you know, you need to um, uh, brush up. So let's talk about complex number roots. Complex number roots only come, they, they come in pairs. So they're going to become, it's either you have zero or you're going to have two or you're going to have four. Okay, but in this particular case, I mean, you can have six, da, 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 eight, but because we only have a total of five, I can only have two or four, right? Zero, two, or four complex roots. So my real roots here, if I have two complex, I must have three real for a total of five. If I have four complex, I must have at least one real for a total of five. So this is kind of like our little kind of uh, pattern breakdown of, of the possibilities for this particular polynomial. Now a real root, one of the things that you really want to uh, um, be able to look at when it comes to solving equations, especially polynomial equations, is their graph, right? So a graph is extremely valuable. And there's things we can tell about this particular graph. But let's say this thing had five real roots. What, what would that look like? It would it be like one, two, that's two, three, four, five, maybe something like that, right? So we have these x-intercepts are real number roots, OK? So this this kind of graph here could be the graph maybe of what, what's going on in this uh, part of this table all right five real roots and if you only had let's say this if i said uh, this was the scenario i have what one two three row roots and then the the graph keeps going up and it's not going to cross the x-axis anymore so that means you're going to have two complex roots this kind of stuff I'm talking about, you should be like, yes, I understand, I get that, etc. So that's good. So if you understand everything I'm talking about so far, perfect, right? So when I asked you how will we go about solving this, well, we want to know something about the roots, the type of um, combinations between real and complex roots, the total number of roots, having the graph is going to be extremely useful. Then we have some other things, right, like the rational root theorem. Now, hopefully, you kind of remember that. It has to do with synthetic division and uh, polynomial long division. But basically, the rational root theorem is extremely useful. It's going to, um, there is a way we can come up with a set of possible rational roots. Remember, a rational number is any number that can be expressed as a fraction, like a whole number. Two, okay, is the same thing as what? Two over one two-thirds, etc. So any number that could be expressed as a fraction using integers um, or negative uh, two-thirds. All these type of numbers are rational roots. There's a way to make a list of these and then we can test to see if these guys are zeros or roots of this particular polynomial equation. Okay, So we have the rational root theorem extremely um, uh, powerful. Then we have Descartes' rule of signs which we look at the different signs, what, how, many, how many times things are changing, that also tells us things that will give us clues on how to, to um, uh, find the solutions to this. Now, a fifth degree polynomial, like it could be kind of challenging, right? 
like especially if there's not any rational roots, then there's even more advanced work that we have to do. Another particular skill that you're going to have to know is you're going to have to be really good at factoring. Okay, you're going to have to make sure you understand that quadratic formula really well. So there's a lot of sub sub skills here to be able to conquer a polynomial equation like this. All right, so I'm just kind of having a conversation with you about these. I'll be like, oh wow, okay, yeah, there is a, kind of a lot going on now. How a problem like this can be posed to you, you know, on the exam, they might ask you something that's like, you know, don't not necessarily solve, but maybe a characteristic about some of the things here. And why would they, you know, like why would they do that? Well, because this is the, this is the kind of things that you're going to have to teach. You're not just passing. You see, you got to think to yourself. You're going into a profession to teach, not just you're not the student. Okay, you 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 have to know this stuff so well. All right, the only way to teach any subject is to know it so well that you understand it and you can, you know, teach it, you know, um, uh, step by step and really uh, uh, teach the process and kind of the whole thing. And it takes experience, okay? And look, even though I have a degree in math, it doesn't make a difference. I still work hard at mastering middle and high school math. Okay, the more I can, deeper I can, you know, get into it and look at different problems and whatnot, it will make you a master of things. So I guess my uh, emphasis here is just because you, you know, you might have an engineering degree or whatever that your background might be, I'm sure you're, you know, obviously well educated and intelligent, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to work hard to master this material. Just because you've seen it once or twice or done well in school, that's okay for you as a student passing your test. That's not you know, uh, indicative though of you being a master of the subject for you to teach it. And I think that you should strive to, to really start learning this material that well, especially if it's going to be a profession to teach it. But anyways, let's kind of wrap this up. So that's pretty much it with that problem. There's probably some of the things I left out, but those are the big ones. Um, Again, if you're looking for a comprehensive uh, math review course, I think mine's uh, pretty excellent. So you can check out that uh, for this particular exam. I'll leave the link in the description uh, below if you want to check it out. I literally have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel um, that will definitely help you out for this exam. So uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. And if you enjoy the video, I wouldn't mind a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. It's the only way I know how I'm doing and your questions or comments give me ideas for future videos. But with that being said, um, from a fellow teacher, you know, uh, whoever you are out there, uh, teaching is really a rewarding career, but it's only those people who actually teach that know how challenging it is, how much it goes into becoming a teacher in terms of, you know, just getting your degree, getting the certifications, and just learning how to teach students. Most people, unless they actually become a teacher, don't, won't understand that. I wish you all the best in your career. We need great teachers, definitely. But I definitely wish you all the best in your career. Um, thank you for spending some time with me. And have a great day.